Hello students, welcome to the lecture on hospital materials management and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the organization of a materials management department, discuss process of materials management, explain how to develop a system for material management. Let's start with the introduction. Materials management is important for a healthcare system because it influences clinical and financial outcomes before selecting adapting and implementing leading or optimized practices, a good understanding of processes and activities has to be developed. In real application, the information flows and business strategies involved are different from hospital to hospital. Depending on context, culture and available resources, it is therefore difficult to find a comprehensive and exhaustive description of process, even more so a clear formalization of them. Let us now discuss organization of a materials management department. Materials management entails two basic functions, purchase, stores. These two functions may be carried out independently, but in coordination through a separate stores department and a purchase department, or the two functions may be integrated into a single store purchase department. Separate departments for purchase and store functions ensure minimization of collusion, formalization of data necessary for making effective purchase and specialization, hence greater efficiency of each of the two functions which intrinsically are independent in nature. Hospital Logistic and Support Hospital materials management, transport and logistic all have significant impacts on a hospital's ability to provide acceptable levels of health care. The two major measures are quality and quantity. Quality. The quality expects of these services are fairly obvious. If the necessary staff, materials, equipment, etc. are not available in the proper condition, quantity, location and quality, then proper health care cannot be provided. Quantity. The quantitative or financial aspects are less obvious but equally as important. The logistic materials and transport related functions will generally account for 35 to 40 percent of a facility's annual operation cost with the materials. Handling portion approximately 14 to 19 percent of that total. Service integration. The materials management and logistic services are best defined and designed as a totally integrated operation that consists of a number of functionally interrelated departments and disciplines. Management considers the needs of each of the other support services as well as the user departments and patients they are intended to serve. Their transportation requirements are integrated into the traffic studies for the supporting elevator and materials handling system. Vertical transport. Proper vertical transport is what makes a hospital work. Just about every function within a hospital depends in one way or another on the ability of people, materials, equipment, supplies and ways to move vertically in the building in a safe, aseptically controlled and efficient manner. Materials Management and Handling It provides operational or management consulting and planning together with comprehensive design services in the areas of materials, management, food and nutrition services, solid waste management, horizontal and vertical transport, laundry, linen, services, central steroid, processing and materials handling. Let us now discuss process of materials management. The process of materials management involves planning, review and control of, budgeting and materials planning, demand forecasting, procurement, received inception payment, inventory control. Budgeting and materials plan. Based on data of past levels of performance and on anticipated activity or plans, capital equipment, consumables and supplies to be procured during the year ahead can be projected department-wide. Such a listing of materials in terms of units required and their cost estimates would constitute the materials budget which should be prepared annually. Once this is done, it is possible at periodic intervals to carry out a budgetary appraisal and determine the variance between actual and the budget. Variances may result from difference in unit cost of materials and or division in their usage. Important in budgetary control and reduction of material cost is the concept of standardization. This involves grouping together similar items depending on their specification or use or application so as to choose one or a few or these more universally acceptable for the purpose. Demand forecasting. Materials in a hospital may be requisitioned 
for an urgent or immediate use or in anticipation of a need on a one-time basis of repeatedly and continuously to replenish the stock as a single unit or as a bulk requirement. The greater the crisis situation and immediate need for the item and the smaller the quantity required, the greater will be the procurement price and the incidental cost of purchase. It is therefore necessary to anticipate the need for the item ensuring that bulk purchases can be affected with maximum price discount. Anticipation of future need is done through demand forecasting, which involves application of statistical technique to predict future requirements based on past consumption patterns. Procurement. An effective purchasing system aims at procurement of items of acceptable quality in appropriate quantities, at the minimum price and within the available time. Purchases may be made by the individual departments of the hospital, decentralized purchasing or by a single purchase department. Centralized purchasing has advantages in that quantity discounts are possible because of standardization and bulk orders. Purchasing costs are decreased because of consolidation and non duplication of orders. Lower inventory costs result because centralization makes possible a lower safety stock and there is better management control as all expect of purchase can be screened by the administration. Received inspection, acceptance, payment. Items ordered from suppliers should be received at a common receiving area. Receiving clerk should attempt to detect mistakes of the vendor, the supplies and or the purchasing department. Once supplies pass these stages, the cost of remedying the mistakes are much higher. The procedure for received, inspection and acceptance of supplies includes the following. While taking delivery from the road, transportation or railway, customs check contains for deficiency and damage. If packing damage insists on open delivery, checking quantity of package, individual items, weights, etc. against packing slip or chalan, any damage or loss should be registered immediately through a claim statement. Or received at the hospital, check supplies for discrepancies in quantity, quality, product specifications, etc. Record shortages, incorrect or damaged material, outdated supply and take action accordingly. All supplies should be inspected and certified by the purchase or stores department, though in the case of technical items, the requisitioned or user should also certify. In the case of bulk orders, random sampling may suffice. Samples of drugs should also be analyzed and certified by the drug analytical laboratory. The necessary documentation should be carried out, day book of receipt, goods inward note, stock ledger, purchase register, bin card. Indenters of special purchase requisition should be notified regarding arrival of materials. Storage. The object of storage is to ensure that till the time of issue for usage, the supplies are adequately preserved to prevent loss or damage. The stores department should be conveniently located to facilitate easy receipt of materials from suppliers and easy dispatch of supplies to the wards and departments. It should be of sufficient size to accommodate all the supplies and must provide for separate areas for receipt of materials, the inception, storage and issue as well as office space for stores personnel. Inventory control. Inventory control principles seek to minimize investment on materials so that sufficient working capital is made available for other more important activities of the organization. The primary purpose of inventory control is therefore to decrease material costs by minimizing stock out costs while at the same time preventing overstocking of materials which result in locking up of capital, possible pilferage and obsolescence. Cyclic system. This is a periodic inventory system where the physical stock position is reviewed at periodic or fixed intervals and orders are placed depending on the stock on hand and rate of consumption. In the system, the ordering interval is fixed but the quantity ordered varies each time. Two bin system. This is a perpetual inventory system where conceptually the stock of each item is held in two bins. One larger bin containing sufficient stock to meet the demands during the interval between arrivals of an order quantity and placing of a next order. The other bin containing stocks large enough to satisfy probable demands during the period of replenishment. Lead time. This is the time required to obtain the supply once the need is determined. That is, it is the average number of days between placing an intent and receiving the material. Minimum stock or safety, buffer stock. This is the amount 
of stock that should be kept in reserve to avoid a stock out in case consumption increases unexpectedly or in case the lead time turns out to be longer than normal. Maximum stock. This is the predetermined limit beyond which the stock of an item should not be allowed to go in the normal course. It is equivalent to the minimum stock level plus the quantity of supplies received at any point of time. Economic order quantity. The EOQ is that quantity at which the cost of ordering the annual requirements of an item and the inventory carrying costs are equal. That is, when the total of the two costs is the lowest, it seeks to strive a balance between purchase costs and the cost of holding inventory. Issued distribution. Items held in inventory by the source may be issued through indents to user departments on a periodical basis example once a week or fortnight or as when necessary the latter is preferable for expensive drugs and consumable especially if the costs are to be depicted to the particular patient systems of stock replenishment towards or departments are of the following types requisition or drug basket system at definite intervals or as when the departmental stock level gets low, a requisition is preferred for replenishing the stock and sent to the stores or pharmacy. The drug basket involves sending an empty container or trolley to the pharmacy with a requisition. The store or pharmacy then issues items in compliance with the requisition. In this system, each department keeps track of its own inventory levels. Power level or chopping up system. The maximum stock level for each ward or department is predetermined on the basic of usage range and frequency of replenishment. This departmental stock is stored in an assigned location. At periodic intervals, store personnel visit the ward or department, carry out a physical inventory of what is available and arrange to replace the stock to the predetermined maximum level. Exchange card system. This system is similar to the power level system in that there are predetermined maximum stock levels and predetermined intervals for stock replenishment. The departmental stock, however, is stored in a card and a duplicate of each carrot in the user area is maintained by the stores. At predetermined intervals, the full card from the stores is taken to the user area in exchange for the depleted card. Usage Inventory control techniques can bring about substantial savings in material costs. But these savings are a relatively small percentage when compared to the saving that can occur through economical and efficient use of materials. Maintenance Proper maintenance of equipment, furniture and fixtures not only ensures their almost continuous availability for use but also an extended life and productivity for the items, thus resulting in lower material costs. Disposal or Condemnation Indents are often improperly scrutinized and unofficially inventory builds up in what departments because of hoarding of supplies. Further capital equipment, instruments and furniture are occasionally issued to departments in excess of their requirements. Developing a system for materials management. The first step in developing a system for materials management is to choose the right type of classification for the material and then apply appropriate techniques such as the economic order quantity EOQ formula, bulk ordering with time phase delivery, a fixed order quantity system, a fixed order period system, a probability based trade of matrix, speculative consideration, the just in time system. ABC classification. This is a basic analytical management tool which enables any executive to expand efforts and energy where the result will be best. This is also known as the Selective Management Principle or Pareto's Law. Wilfredo Pareto, an Italian philosopher and economist, observed that a very large percentage of the total national income and wealth was concentrated in a small percentage of the population. Mechanics of ABC analysis. The mechanics of classifying items into A, B, and C categories is given as calculate the rupee value of the issues for each item in the inventory by multiplying the unit cost by the number of units issued during the year. It is assumed that all issues are for consumption. Sort out all items by the rupee value of annual issues in descending sequence. Prepare a list from these ranked items showing item number, unit cost, annual units issued and the annual rupee value of units issued. 
starting at the top of the list compute a running total of item by item issue value and rupee consumption value HML classification this method is similar to ABC classification but in this case instead of the consumption value of items their unit value is considered for classification as the name implies the materials are classified according to the unit value as high medium and low the cut off point will depend on the individual user XYZ classification while ABC classification has the value of consumption as its basis, XYZ has the value of inventory available on a particular date in the store as its basis. This study is taken up once in a year during the annual stock taking exercise. X items are those items whose stock value is high, while Z items are those whose stock values are low. Understandably, Y items fall between the two categories. VED classification. This is applicable to a large extent in spare parts management. Stocking a spare part is based on strategies different from those of raw materials, while the consumption of raw materials depends directly and definitely on the market demand. The spare part demand, on the other hand, depends on the performance of plan and machinery. FSN classification. Movement analysis forms a basic for the classification. The items are classified as fast moving, slow moving and non-moving based on their consumption pattern. If there is a rapid change in technology, this classification should be updated more often. FSN analysis is especially useful to control obsolescence, spoil age and deterioration in all kinds of items. Cut-off points for fast, slow and non-moving items usually depend on the characteristic of the items, the value and utility for operation. SDE classification. The SDE classification is a system where materials are sorted out as scarce to obtain, difficult to obtain or easy to obtain. It is quite obvious that when an item is scarce and also in the A class, an imaginative regulation has to be found to manage it. GOLF classification. In the GOLF system classification is based on the availability and nature of suppliers. The nature of the suppliers will determine the quantity and continuity of supply, lead time payment, terms and clerical processing cost and time. SOS classification. Raw materials can also be classified as seasonal or off-season items. Agricultural products have a seasonal availability pattern depending on the monsoon. The prices will be lowest at the time of harvest. Hence, the inventory system will have to balance for a longer period of time between the holding costs and the lower prices at which it will be available while working out the levels for this class of items. One cannot apply the economic or the quantity formula in this situation. For instance, inventories at the time of procurement will be somewhat high, but that cannot be helped. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The Materials Management Department is responsible for purchasing all hospital supplies and equipment for controlling hospital inventory. The department interfaces with every hospital department, assuring supplies are kept in stock, equipment is purchased in a timely and cost-effective manner, and all supplies are available 24 hours a day. Materials management is a particularly difficult discipline for location that must import the majority of their supplies and unless properly convinced and implemented can create significant problems with healthcare delivery. Proper vertical transport is what makes a hospital work. Just about every function within a hospital depends in one way or another on the availability of the people, materials, equipment, supplies and ways to move vertically in the building in a safe, aseptically controlled and efficient manner. A moving average which uses a large time span will effectively neutralize the sudden temporary surges in demand and it will also decrease the standard deviation of the error. However, the greater the time span, the greater will be the time lag resulting in a greater error of forecast. The primary purpose of inventory control is therefore to decrease material costs by minimizing stock out costs while at the same time preventing overstocking of materials which result in locking up of capital, possible pilferage and obsolescence.